please rise as Mr. Richard Snyder, he has retired the members of the location. Our dear eternal Heavenly Father, as we come before thee this evening, how grateful we are to be together as family, friends, colleagues, and co-workers. How grateful we are to be here to celebrate the 247th birthday of the U.S. Marine Corps. We pray that thy spirit may be here with us this night, that we may celebrate with thy peace and thy blessing. We are grateful for our Marines. We're grateful for the armed forces that serve around the world. We ask thee that thou will always look over our Marines, regardless of where they are in the world, that they will be protected and guided, directed, and ensured that they are able to come home safely to their families who support them so in depth and in love for the work that they do. We acknowledge thy hand in our lives, that we are blessed to be here together. We so pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the video screens. A message from the 30th Commandant of the Marine Corps, General David H. Berg. considers himself a better soldier than anybody else. Marines have never given anyone any reason to think differently. We are unique, not just among our fellow citizens, but among all those who defend our nation. We are defined by our war fighting ethos, our intangible warrior spirit that moves us forward into any battle any domain and binds us not only to the Marine on our left and right, but to all Marines who came before us. Current events around the world show us that peace is far from guaranteed. America's adversaries continue to present an ever-evolving threat to our nation's prosperity and security. Today, almost 31,000 Marines are forward deployed and stationed abroad. And every time and place, standing ready to confront those who do our nation. The American strength is based upon the fabric of all of the different cultures and people that come to it. And that applies on the battlefield, and I've seen that there. That is an essence of the power of the American fighting spirit. For 247 years, capable and determined adversaries have tested the Marine Corps. The enemy knows when they see that EGA and they see a real Marine hooked to that EGA, that could be a serious situation. On each occasion, 
our forebears gave them reason to fear and respect the title United States Marine. Our adversaries have always had a choice. Abandon their aggressions or stand and fight. Some chose to fight and were destroyed. Today, our adversaries still have a choice. And they know if they choose to fight, they will be defeated. From the wheat fields of Bella Wood, to the volcanic sands of Iwo Jima, to the crowded streets of Kuwait City, or Imani, Marines prove time and time again they will claim victory on any battlefield. Our mission will stay on the compound. Well, things happen, situations change, and we got a call that going from the Marine Security Guard Force, the uh, RSO, and their driver were involved in a vehicle accident. We were driven out to the crash site, Liberian rebels armed to the teeth with anything that they had. We had to uh, do a makeshift backboard and stabilize them and got all of our personnel. You're trained for it, but you know, there's variables in there that you could never prepare for. And so you just go with it. And while battlefields and technologies change, the qualities of a Marine are timeless. Grit, strength, boldness, discipline, initiative, adaptability, honor, courage, and commitment. It would be impossible for me to say with any amount of confidence that I would be where and who I am today if I didn't have the foundation of being a Marine. The Marine Corps and how it shapes us and the history of courage and sacrifice that we fill the shoes of and that we follow. Um, it's almost impossible to not continue on and to not want to become the best version of yourself personally but professionally as a Marine as well. These qualities were birthed by the legacy of the old Marine. Those like Herschel Woody Williams. He really just was a huge inspiration growing up. I loved warrior figures and he was the main one. It's the legacy of the Marines who came before us, and of our Marines today. When the nation calls, we answer. As America's premier crisis response force, Marines thrive in chaotic situations where friction is highest. We have to always understand that there's always been troops on the deck taking a fight to the enemy on their distant lands. We are proud to be first to fight, and we are ready today and tomorrow. Standing ready with undying devotion to the Lord, to the mission, and to each other. Our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. In 2001, when our nation was still reeling from the September 11th terrorist attacks, Marines aboard the USS Payload the USS Baton came from the sea and launched the longest amphibious raid in history. We came 370 miles from the sea, 25 aircraft. During one period of darkness, we inserted 400 Marines over that distance. We did what we say that we did. We did it in an expeditionary manner, we did it from the ships, and despite a lot of risk, we did it successfully. The same warfighting spirit that secures our victory in combat comes from our ability to innovate, to iterate, to adapt. And we find inspiration in each other. I remember my first cat shot in an F-18 into a combat zone. And that was a whirlwind of emotions, right? You're ready to go practice, you're trained, but you're a little bit nervous. That nervousness, though, I think is good, right? It keeps you sharp. She's more than an astronaut. She's a Marine whose warfighter ethos shapes who she is. A battle-tested warrior with 47 combat missions in Iraq 
and Afghanistan. When I'm sitting on top of that rocket and you start to move the prop and it starts to shake and rumble, I hope that I feel a little bit nervous, it keeps me sharp. I hope though that I have this calmness, knowing that I'm trained, my crew is trained, we are ready to go. And I hope that the second that we launch from planet Earth, that all just disappears and bring them home. While those who threaten our nation remain, America sleeps well at night knowing the future will be no different. Because the Marines are always standing ready. Across the force, we continue to innovate and experiment in preparation for the future fight. Where we will fight might be uncertain, but we prepare for uncertainty. When called, we will fight and we will win. Today, tomorrow, and in the future. These victories are not won because of our technology or our equipment, but because of all of you. Because of everything you do, every day, to remain the best trained, most professional, most ready force in the world. That has not changed. We are war fighters first and always. If the call comes today to go into combat, we will win. That's no excuse not to be better tomorrow. It is the individual Marines who make up the team. They are the decisive advantage. Whether in combat or in competition, training our future Marines with recruit training, or preparing to deploy on one of our Marine Expeditionary Units, we are always adapting to the changing character of war. Why we fight and why we win is unchanged. It is our ethos, our character, and our unapologetic resolve to be the most capable and most able fighting force in the world. Marines, you are writing the next chapter of our war. Our legacy rests upon your shoulders, and I'm confident you will meet the task. Super Fighters, happy birthday, Marines.
gentlemen, honors to them, Ambassador Elizabeth Pitt Simmons, and remain standing for the presentation of the colors. What do we say? Oh! Since the birth of our Corps, 
Maurice have acquitted himself with the greatest distinction, winning new honors on each occasion until the term Marine has come to signify all that is highest in military efficiency and soldierly virtue. This high name of distinction and soldierly repute we war Marines today have received from those who have preceded us in the war. With it, we also receive from them the eternal spirit which has animated our corps from generation to generation and has been the distinguishing mark of Marines in every age. So long as the spirit continues to flourish, Marines will be found equal in every emergency in the future as they have been in the past. And the men of our nation will regard, will regard us as worthy successors to the long line of illustrious men who have served as soldiers of the sea since the founding of the Corps. The timeless and inspiring message of the 13th Commonwealth has left its mark in the hearts and minds of all Marines, past and present. By taking snacks from Bellawood to the Argon, from Guadalcanal to Iwo Jima, from Inchit on to the Korean Armistice, from the hard fights in Vietnam to Desert Shield, Desert Storm, to the centuries longest wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, and in the hundreds of other places where Marines have distinguished themselves. Marines have continued to epitomize those qualities, which are their legacy. The success which the men and women have earned the title of Marine have achieved in combat, and the faith they have borne in peace will endure forever. The Commandant and her many friends have added their hearty praise and congratulations on this, our 247th birthday. This evening, our guest of honor is the Honorable Elizabeth Ann Fitzsimmons, the United States Ambassador to the Republic of Togo. She is a career member of the Senior Foreign Service, class of minister counsel prior to her appointment as Ambassador to Togo. She was the Acting Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary for the Bureau of African Affairs. She also has served as Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for Central African and Public Diplomacy. The Acting Deputy Spokesperson for the Department, Deputy Executive Secretary to the Secretaries Kerry and Tillerson, and Deputy Assistant Secretary for Public Diplomacy in the Bureau of South and Central Asian Affairs. She joined the Department in 1995, and at that time of her swearing in was the youngest of the Foreign Service. She has served overseas in Taiwan, Hong Kong, Cambodia, India and Bulgaria. She and her husband, retired diplomatic security special agent Richard Seibert, have five children. Please welcome the podium, Ambassador Elizabeth Ann Fitzsimmons. Distinguished guests, General Carter, Dear colleagues from the U.S. Embassy in Accra, the U.S. Embassy here in Lomé, notre cher partenaire des Forces Armées Togolais, soyez la bienvenue. Dear friends, and most importantly, Marines, especially the Marines of the Embassy Lomé Marine Security Detachment, Gunnery Sergeant Adam Ad Ad Tibisar, Sergeant Domingo Trevino, Sergeant Wyatt Jeffs, Sergeant Adrian Santos, who even at this very hour is guarding the embassy and not here with us, Corporal Raymond Negrete, Lance Corporal Jason Barrera, Lance Corporal Joshua Hegarty, and Lance Corporal Guadalupe Salinas. Welcome. Tonight, we come together to celebrate the 247th anniversary of the United States Marine Corps. Marine detachments have been an integral part of U.S. diplomatic missions around the world since 1948, and Marine security guards currently protect over 190 U.S. embassies and consulates. Marines not only protect embassy personnel, but also prevent the compromise of national security information and equipment. As I was reflecting on what I wanted to share this evening, I spent some time reading about the Marine Corps 
and I discovered the Marine Corps' statement of purpose. It reads, the Marine Corps mission reflects every Marine's purpose. In essence, our nation is that purpose. In our world, in ourselves, and in our way, there are conflicts, challenges, and obstacles that must be fought confidently and defeated convincingly for our nation to prevail. These looming battles come in many forms and occur on many fronts, but each comes down to a critical choice, to demand victory or accept defeat, to pull together or fall apart, to give in or cave in. It is a decision each Marine conveys to our nation with each battle won. Our seven Marines, led by Gunnery Sergeant Tibisar, posted to the U.S. Embassy in Lomé, are the living embodiment of that purpose. The Embassy Lomé Marine Security Guard Detachment supports the United States as we build an ever stronger partnership between the United States and the Republic of Togo. Our Marines aid in the promotion of democracy and peace for Togo, and by extension, for all of Africa. In addition to their daily service to keep our embassy operational and our bilateral relationship strong, we cannot forget their many other contributions, like the annual Toys for Tots drive that brightens the lives of so many Togolese children each holiday season. As President Biden says of the United States, we lead not merely by the example of our power, but by the power of our example. Marines, and in particular, our detachment at Embassy Lomé, embody the very best of the values we as a nation wish to share with the people of Togo. Service, honor, diversity, dedication, and the promotion and protection of democracy. Their example is inspiring not only to the embassy community they serve, but to the people of Togo. Tonight, we particularly honor these eight outstanding members of our Marine Security Detachment who keep us safe night and day, standing watch 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. In addition, we are fortunate to have with us Corporal Mohammed Digareku, who's a first-generation Togolese American who's joined the Marine Corps. He is stationed in Yuma, Arizona, and will begin Marine Security Guard School in Quantico, Virginia in January. Congratulations, Corporal, on your decision to join the ranks of these fantastic Marines at U.S. Missions Abroad. <laughs> to all of the Marines with us tonight, and especially to our own Embassy Lomé Marine Security Guard Detachment, thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for protecting us. And most importantly, thank you for being such an integral part of our embassy family. Happy birthday and Semper Fidelis.
kindergarten attachment from Homemade Togo. I just wanted to uh, give a couple of thanks and uh, words of appreciation before we uh, bring out our guest speaker. First and foremost, I want to thank Ambassador Fitzsimmons, Mr. Richard Cypher, the uh, conditions that you set for the embassy and your leadership are amazing in the Marines. Um, I cannot picture a better ambassador uh, that we would love to uh, serve. As well as our Deputy Chief of Mission, Mr. Ron Hawkins. We appreciate you, sir. Thank you for all your mentorship. You sharing State Department policies with us. The conditions you set in your leadership, we appreciate you, sir. Thank you. Going down the list, I really want to thank GSO, Mr. Rob Villar, Mr. Francis Ajana, for making the introductions to the hotel here. We want your Masen and Madam Lou. This event would be possible if they didn't make the introductions for me, as well as Barrera, to set up the ball here. Thank you, gentlemen. We'd also like to thank our CLO, our community li liaison officer, Ms. Cora, Ms. Sonia, for including us type of embassy activity that they come up with or that we come up with them in cooperation. Thank you so much. We want to thank our outstanding FM, Mr. Penning, who always helps us out with things at the Marine House and always is uh, willing to assist and drop everything he can to help out the Marines. Thank you, sir. I really want to thank the Regional Security Office, Mr. Roberts, Mrs. Villar, your leadership, Absolutely outstanding. Working for you every day and the training that you give me in the Marines is outstanding and we cannot thank you enough for everything you do. Along with that, we want to thank our local guard force. Me personally, every time I come to the embassy, it's always I'm always greeted with a smile. And it, I love coming to work just to see their, their faces and uh, the greetings we share every day. You know, we also appreciate the integral part they play in our embassy security, the first line of defense. We thank you. I want to thank the best band in Togo who happens to be here tonight. Minami, thank you for being here. We appreciate you. And now kind of getting to a couple people that work with the Marines directly. I want to thank Felix, our barber, who always thinks it's outstanding every week. <laughs> Without you, my spouse would have to cut our hair and that would take forever. <laughs> and thank you, Felix, for your uh, always willingness to come to the Marine House and uh, uh, cut hair and do whatever uh, we ask. Thank you, sir. Some of the unsung heroes of, I think, the embassy. I want to highlight our Marine drivers, Adem, Christoph, and Nicholas, who always they share a spree decor with what they do as being our marine drivers. They always help us out. They're almost like the first link to the, the local customs and culture. They always teach us and uh, we always learn something from that. Thank you, gentlemen. It goes without being said, this amazing cake that we have here tonight by our very own compassionate cook, Godwin. Day in and day out, he always shows up to make three meals a day for the Marines at the house. He does it with a smile. We appreciate you, Godwin, for everything that you do and your willingness to help the Marines out at any time. Thank you. I would be absolutely remiss if I didn't mention this uh, gentleman. My father, Nicholas Tibisar, flew in from Billings, Montana, from the United States, to be here with us tonight. The way I see it, He's a uh, representative of the, the homes that Marines come from, either be a father, mother, grandparents, uncle, aunt. His foundation that he said to me, the work ethic that I saw him do growing up, that's, he's the reason why I'm a gunny. Thank you, Dad. Uh, 
I, my wife Ryan, she's been with me since 2008. Before I, we, we, even before the Marine Corps was a thing, before I even stepped into a recruiter's office, we were together. She's been on overseas, around the country. We have three beautiful children, McLean, Bronson, and Deborah. Uh, she's the, the best spouse I could ever ask for on this journey in the Marine Corps. Uh, she also represents all the, all the military spouses around the world that put such support and allow us to do what we have to do. You look great in your dress, Ryan. <laughs>
I had about 20 pages of preparing remarks this evening, but the ambassador stole it all my thunder. <laughs> and Gunny just nailed it. I'll get to some prepared remarks, but I really want to thank all of you for taking time out of your, your busy schedule to come here and celebrate with us tonight. It's Gunny who uh, really did a phenomenal job introducing the ambassador. Ambassador Simmons on behalf of uh, Michael's Commandant of the Marine Corps. And as you know, we have a new African commander, General Langley, four star General Langley, just to see him working on his 90 day assessment. But I bid you greetings uh, from General Langley and the team. Thank you for being here tonight. We're honored that you accept our invitation to be our guest of honor and you grace us with your presence. Please, another round of applause for our ambassador. I'm 
remarks here, and I want to put some things in context. Uh, and put it in context and let you know what this evening is all about, what it means to be a Marines. Why are we so fanatical about the Marine Corps? I talked to the ambassador today, and she's been very fortunate. I mean, 15 plus balls, and we probably stopped counting after that. And many of you that served in embassies around the world had an opportunity to participate in the Marine Corps balls as well. But for those that have not, I'll try to put some things in context. So 247 years ago, in 1775, in Tunn's Tavern, in a local place in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Yes, it was at a bar that the Marine Corps actually started its reach. And from that day, in every battle, every climb and place, Marines had participated in battles. And along the way, as you heard from the Commandant's message, it's unfortunate, but we have lost Marines along the way. And so every day, every year, about this time, we pause to reflect, not only on our heritage, but pay a tribute to those that have gone before us, to make alternate sacrifices. Every embassy that we have around the world, and since Benghazi was then about 152 missions, now over, as you heard the ambassador remark, 190 missions around the world, every last mile are guarded by the so this evening, you not just a glimpse, a look at the professionalism that it takes to not only help and guard and protect the U.S. mission, but calls to reflect on what's going on. When you think about leadership, and you look it up in the dictionary, you'll see gunner sharp. I want to just tell you what you saw tonight, because He's not going to bring it like this. He talked and gave credit to everybody in the room, to include his partner. Wow. <laughs> and what's particularly special, he paid tribute to the Marines that he leaves them every day. And if you didn't pick up on it, the small nuance, he said, Happy birthday to each and every one of them, gave each and every one of them a hug. And he called them brothers. That's pretty special, right? The true testament of a leader is that you try to brag on that leader, and they'll deflect and brag on somebody else. And it's you see a leader like this. How did they get here? I'll tell you that they stood on the shoulders of giants. Gunny just touched on it, but Gunny, for your father, sir, could you please stand up in the back? Go into your seat.
collar guard, the cake bearers, they're standing there. The guy made a phone call to me to one group that is standing watch. And in the blink of an eye, you may not notice, but the youngest group, he will quietly disappear and he will assume his post tonight. And while you all tuck yourselves in, and go to sleep after enjoying yourself this evening. He will stand on that post and guard the embassy until proper room. Ladies and gentlemen, please round of applause for my teammates in the back.
Please rise for the plane of Anchor's Way in the Marine's Hill. Oh, no.